that actually happened in the town of Colmar. Now in Colmar there was a merchant and he had very brilliant ideas and always thought that he could make himself a very wealthy man. He never succeeded in that. Where he did succeed was having a beautiful and devoted and very pious wife. So the merchant, he went traveling to try and buy goods and sell goods and make a fortune that he had never made so far. And his wife, left alone, <coughs> went to confess. This is kind of amusing because she really didn't have much to confess. But she went to one of the, mon one of the three monasteries in Colmar, the monastery of the Augustinians. And she went to the confessor and she said, I would like to confess my sins. And he said, you know, I have this idea. If you, if you would let me know you as your husband would know you, I would give you 50 pieces of silver and then you would truly have something worth confessing. <laughs> <laughs> he thought it was a wonderful idea. The merchant's wife was distraught that a man of God would say such a thing, would offer such a thing. She burst into tears. She ran out of the monastery and ran all the way to the monastery of the Dominicans. Because now, not only has she not gotten to confess, but she had listened to lustful thoughts. And she went in to the confessional in the monastery of the Dominicans. And she told the monk there what the Augustinian had offered. The Dominican said, that is disgusting. That is an abomination. Anyone who would offer you less than a hundred pieces of salt is <laughs> <laughs> not worthy of his tonsure. She didn't wait for any more to be said. She fled in tears and fled to the monastery of the Franciscans. It went very differently in the monastery of the Franciscans. She was off 200 pieces of silver there. <laughs> there were no monasteries left to flee to. And she ran home, where she sat on the floor and she cried and cried. She cried for days until her husband arrived home. It took a while for her to be willing to even tell him what had happened. And then, when she told him, he said the most frightening thing he could possibly say. He said, I have an idea. <laughs> As it happens, I did not, I did not find my travels to be profitable. And I think we could turn these monks into a, well, into sort of a business venture. And no, you won't have to sleep with any monks because, as I said, I have a plan. <laughs> so she was to go to each of the monasteries in turn, and the first monk would arrive at 7, and the next at 8, and the next at 9. And each was told to make sure they brought the silver they'd offered, because you always take the money first, he said. <laughs> and she came back to the house to find her husband had filled a giant tub with boiling water in the middle of the main room of the house. The first monk arrived. He said, are you willing to make me a happy monk? Mm -hmm. She said, that depends. Have you brought the silver? Because you always take the money first. <laughs> and he took the money and he put it on a small table. And she began to disrobe. But before she'd become the least bit immodest, there came a banging and a crashing from the other room. She said, my God, that's my husband. He'll kill both of us. Quick, hide in the tub. And the monk jumped in the tub where he was scalded and drowned. No time for congratulations, not that much later. The next monk came by. He said, I believe we made a bargain in the eyes of God. Are you prepared to honor that bargain? to make the offer 
offering that you had made offered in the eyes of God. Because you always, always take the money. Thank you. <laughs> I, I'll just let you do that. <laughs> and so he took the pouch of silver and put it down on the table. And she began to disrobe, but she had barely touched the laces of her gown when there came a banging and a crashing from the other room. She said, my God, I have my husband. He'll kill both of us. Well, he'll kill you at any rate. Quick, hide in the tub. And the monk jumped in the tub where he was scalded and drowned. At the scheduled time, the third monk came along. He said, we, we have some arrangements to conclude. I believe that we had some theological studies we discussed. <laughs> she said, what theological studies? Give me the silver because you always take the money first. And I'll take my clothes on and we'll just get down with it. <laughs> it's amazing how jaded you can get in Colmar. <laughs> But no sooner had she spoken the words, than there came a banging and a clunking from the other room. She said, my God, it's my oven. What a surprise. <laughs> I'm shocked. I am the tub. And the monk jumped in the tub where he was scalded and he drowned. The husband walked out from the other room and said, well, that takes care of that. His wife said, this takes care of nothing. I have three dead monks in my house. <laughs> I will not consider this matter resolved, and I will not let you know me as a husband would know me until these monks are gone from my home. Her husband said to her, I have an idea. <laughs> and he went out to the street where there was a student walking by. Now, there are several things you can count on a student for that late at night. One is that he's liable to be drunk. And secondly, why would he leave money? Because he probably spent what he had on drink. And a student was walking by, and he was no disappointment at all. <laughs> the husband said, you there. Me, sir? Yes, you. How would you like to make four fennings? Suicide? <laughs> Do that? What's involved? Oh, nothing, really. I just, it's an inconvenience. I have this dead monk in my house. <laughs> they, 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 make, they make the house look bad. They make the neighbors ask questions. He just needs you to go away. I, I need you to throw the monk into the Rhine for Phoenix. The stupid greedy done worse. <laughs> and the husband said, all right, there you go. Here's the monk. And the student over his shoulder and staggered down to the right. And when he got there, he flew by in, and he watched it float off. And he went back to the husband with his hand out. Oh. And there was a monk leaning up against the wall. And the student looked at the monk. And the monk did not look at the student. And the student looked at the monk. And the monk did not look at the student. And the student said, that monk was not there a moment ago. And he threw the monk up over his shoulder. Because clearly he was there now. And he staggered back to the line. But now he knew how sneaky the monks in Colmar were. Even the dead ones. <laughs> he started taking rocks. He weighted down the vestments of the monk. He threw him in. He watched him sink. And he waited, and he waited, and he went back to the house with his hand out. And the husband looked at him and said, you trickster, I have offered you an honest bargain. Four fennings to throw out one monk, and yet there is the monk, and here you are with your hand out. Not a single shiny fennig until this monk is in the river. Didn't even look at the monk, just threw him up over his shoulder and went back to the Rhine, where he took every rock 
he could find. He was pulling loose bricks out of buildings. <laughs> they threw the monk into the Rhine, and the monk sank. And he did not come back. And the student started to walk back to the house. And he saw a monk <laughs> out for a late night walk. <laughs> Yes, you devil! No, sir, I think you're confused. I am not a devil. I, I'm a monk. Okay, devil, monk. Devil, monk. You've been vexing me all night. Sir, I've been in prayers all night. Oh, you know what you've done. And before the eyes of God, yeah, you will pay for this. And he picked up a rock, probably the last rock in all of Comar, and he death with it. Oh. And then throw him on his shoulder. With his dog one rock, that was the best he could do. <laughs> and he went back to the husband with his hand out and he told him everything that had happened. He told him everything that had happened. <laughs> and the husband said, you killed a monk? <laughs> that was sinful of you. If I were you, I'd confess. <laughs> but he gave the student four fennings. That's one fenning per monk. <laughs> and the student went on his way. And some lessons were learned. You see, <laughs> indeed, the, the first three monks, they learned that sometimes when you make the devil's bargain, you have to pay the devil's price. The fourth monk learned that sometimes the innocent really do suffer for the misdeeds of the wicked. But it was the student who learned the most important lesson of all. Always.